Good evening and welcome to the second meeting of the Town of Barnstable Local Comprehensive Planning Committee. Thank you all for sharing this beautiful summer evening um, with us once again um, and to your service to the town um, and this committee. Again, I'm Elizabeth Jenkins, Director of Planning and Development. Um, I'm just gonna open the meeting by stating that, um, again, to get us started, um, we have asked Stephen Costello as chair of the planning board to preside over this meeting um, and, and uh, to facilitate the elections. Um, so Steve will facilitate this process and then we will turn it over to our, um, to our new committee chair. Uh, before I turn over the meeting to Steve, just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, we do have some refreshments for those who'd like them. It is dinner time. Um, as of today, all of the bathrooms in Town Hall are opened, so um, you can use the ones here on the second, um, as well as the third floor. Uh, all of the information that was uh, provided on the laser fiche and on the website has been printed um, for the committee. Uh, you can find that in your packets. And I'd just like to introduce a couple of new folks that we have on our team tonight. Um, this is Jenna Zinno. She's gonna be our administrative assistant. Um, she is new with planning and development department. Um, welcome, Jenna. She's gonna take our meeting minutes tonight. Um, Ryan Bennett is our housing coordinator. Um, she wasn't able to make our last meeting, um, but she's playing a really important role in planning and housing initiatives across the town. And Jill Salankis um, is new with the Barrett team tonight and will help uh, be the project manager um, on this project for the Barrett group. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Steve. Great, thank you, Elizabeth, and good evening, and calling the meeting to order on August 25th, 2022, of the Local Comprehensive Planning Committee. Uh, my name is Stephen Costello. Uh, notice of recording, uh, this meeting is being recorded and broadcast on Channel 18 in accordance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. The committee must, the committee chair must inquire whether anyone is taping this meeting and to please make their presence known. Our uh, first item up for discussion, as Elizabeth mentioned, is election of officers, a chair, a vice chair, and a clerk. Um, so the process is going to be, I will ask for nominations for the chair position, and then I will ask for uh, vice chair nominations, and then I will ask for clerk. And having never done this, uh, process, I guess, maybe I'll lean on you, Elizabeth. Do you suggest we uh, maybe go through the, the chair first, get that ironed out, and then move forward? I'm just kind of wondering in terms of um, folks that may be interested in other positions on the, on the ring. That sounds fine. Elizabeth? So you'll ask for nominations for chair, um, no seconds are required, and then you'll call for a vote. Is that, okay. And then we'll move to vice chair. May I just may ask one question? I, know, I, I read all the, um, sorry to interrupt, but I read all the information and a little bit because I don't know everybody here. I, uh, the one that was doesn't seem to have a background is you. Any chance you can tell us a little bit? There's 13 and there's 14 of us. There's not 13 people. I don't, why wouldn't I not have a background? I'm sure you do. <laughs> where, are you, where are you looking? In the, in the minutes where it's talking about everybody and everybody's background. You know, so yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, no, I did give the background, but happy to do it again. So my name's Stephen Costello. I've been a resident of Barnstable for 27 years. I have three children, all went to Barnstable schools from kindergarten, preschool, all the way up through uh, Barnstable High School. I am currently um, maybe the second longest standing member of the Barnstable Planning Board. Currently not the chairperson. I recently... Um, uh, Stephen Robichaud was was um, introduced as the new uh, Barnstable uh, Planning Board chairperson. Um, I live in Osterville, and I am currently working as a insurance broker for a, a firm out of Boston. And I also do some uh, local initiatives, and I do own um, a commercial real estate building here in Hyannis, promoting um, minority business interests. So, thank you. It just didn't seem fair that you didn't, didn't have I, things about you. I appreciate you looking out for me. Usually I do that for myself, but I, I thank you so much. So with that, I will move that we take 
uh, nominations. So what I'm going to do is is ask for nominations, and depending on how many question. we get, is there oh, any sure. way we can talk about what the responsibilities are for each of the positions, like what what that entails? Certainly, and I'm going to defer to Elizabeth for that answer. Sure, I'd be happy to, and. Um, you know, I guess I'll derive these comments based on the town manager memorandum to the town council that established the local comprehensive planning committee, as well as just customary experience um, administering boards, committees, and commissions here in the town of Barnstable. Um, so the chairperson is our obviously our meeting facilitator, the one who presides over the meetings. Um, they will work with staff um, on agenda setting um, uh, prior to. Uh, prior to all the meetings um, and preparation as necessary, um, and really is, is the leader and the guide of discussion um, and facilitated discussion for the group. Um, the vice chair, primarily responsibility is to act as chair um, when the chair is not able, um, so someone who's able to step in and fill those shoes and stay active enough sort of as a member of that executive committee uh, to step in where necessary. Um, the clerk, um, you know, is, again, this is not a regulatory board, so we don't have decisions to sign necessarily, but um, essentially, you know, is asked to work with whoever our record keeper is just to take a really uh, close look at the minutes, um, make sure that they're reflecting the, um, reflecting the discussions accurately that we've had in this committee and just keeping their eye out to make sure that we are open, that we are operating um, openly, transparently, and in accordance with open meeting law. Thank you, Elizabeth. And since we're getting to know each other, I'm just going to suggest that um, if you're going to make a nomination, just announce or introduce yourself. That way we can make sure we're all comfortable and confident with everyone's name. So with that, uh, I would ask for first nomination for committee chair. And feel free to raise your hand. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Lindsay Council, and I would nominate Steve Costello. Oh, Sorry about that. Okay, thank you. I'm going to ask for any additional nominations. Okay. No, no additional <laughs> nominations. <laughs> what did I miss? Okay. Uh, so I guess at this point, we can take a vote on that. Mr. Costello, do you accept the nomination? I, I do. Okay, then okay. yes, I would proceed to a vote. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. It's anonymous, unanimous. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate that. So with that, we can move on to the nominations for vice chair. Alicia Penn. You have a hand up from the we have a hand up from a member of the audience. Okay. I'll happily repeat. I nominated Felicia Penn, and I believe there was a second. I second the nomination for Ann Parks. Any additional nominations of any any other individuals? I'd like to nominate Wendy Northcross as vice chair. I second that, Mark Hansen. Okay. So with that, um, we'll take a vote. Uh, first up is Felicia Penn. All those in favor of Felicia Penn? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All those in favor of Wendy? I vote for you too. One, two, three, no. four, five. You're not voting for yourself. Okay. Felicia, you are vice chair. You accept the position. I do, and thank you for your confidence. <clears throat> thank you. And moving on to the clerk position. I'd like to nominate Wendy Northcross. Did, did the audience hear that? Okay. Any additional nominations? Seeing none, Wendy, do you accept the nomination? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, so let's just 
Got a minute here to get our next agenda item out. Um, next up is our <coughs> approval of minutes for June 29th, 2022. Um, and I assume you certainly read them, yep. right? Okay. One and, uh, not, if there's no uh, corrections, would you like a um, motion to accept them? Uh, I would have a change first. Oh. Okay, go ahead. I think we should add your bio if you had one. It, yeah. <laughs> that I, would I, be I, one change I would make. And <laughs> the other would be on my, my bio here, it, the second okay. sentence should read, uh, he is retired, was formerly the chairman of the Conservation Commission in the Land Bank Committee and is, and is the chair of the Community Preservation Committee. Okay. And I know we have our, um, our new member, Jenna, taking notes of that. If we could update our notes to include that. Yes, did you have a question as well? I had two notes. Um, I do see you on here right under the introductions, um, right before Cheryl. And also, I'm wondering if we can get oh, the minutes as an attachment as opposed to just a link, because I think there may be a few people that did not notice that that's a link for the minutes in their okay. email. Mine doesn't actually have them before me, but you know maybe there's two sets, perhaps. Anyway, but I, I, there's a motion to make sure that they're in there, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one way or another. Mr. Chair, I can clarify this if you'd like. Sure. I read the minutes, and I sent an email to Jim and to Kate pointing out that you've been left off the matrix on page one in your summary, and I think Kate has updated the minutes on the computer, but uh, perhaps hasn't been distributed. Okay, thank you. I did not catch that. Um, Nor did I, thank you. So we will make that, uh, we will make that update and, and can I correct my, just my, you approve with the amendment. Can I correct my motion then to, um, to accept the minutes as amended? I still think, Mr. You're, you're good with it, okay. If, if, if that's the case, we will make sure the minutes are updated to include the correct information and approve I, them. Well, I would second her motion. So we're just going to accept them as, as they are? As amended. As amended. As amended. As amended, sure. Okay. So the things that were mentioned. Great. Um, all in favor of accepting them as amended? Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Um, next topic for discussion is are the group guidelines for conduct and decision making and Elizabeth is that something we're going to go over you're going to go over individually or it's just I noticed there's the attachment in our agenda um, yeah, we, for, we for did tonight. have some examples I guess what we were hoping for was sort of a brief facilitated discussion but I certainly defer to you um, Mr. Chair on how you'd like to proceed on for, forward with this um, you know, currently, you know, our meetings are, are pretty straightforward, but as we get down the line, this group will be charged with synthesizing a lot of complex, complex information into <coughs> consensus positions and really translating those into actions for our community. And, and given this charge, I think it, it's fundamental that we have a dynamic um, that allows for productive discussion. Um, you know, clearly we're, we're gonna have some challenges. This is a big committee. Um, this is a very big group. And I think the idea was to make sure that everybody's voice got heard. So talking about ways that we can ensure that happens up front, I think is important. Um, also, of you, also, all of you were chosen because you represent different perspectives. Um, so we, we hope those different perspectives come to the table. But again, I think it's also important that we, we start out with an understanding of of you know how discussions are going to happen and move forward and remain respectful, um, we have some sort of fundamentals, some some ground rules that come with being a public body. Um, we all know we have to comply with the open meeting law and we have to comply with the conflict of interest law. Those are all things we sign up for when um, we sign up as as board members or municipal officials. There are, there are other sort of rules of meeting engagement that are gonna be established because of this. We'll, we'll have an agenda, we'll have to follow the agenda. Um, you, know, you can't have side conversations or, or you know, deliberate out of the, the main group. Um, we'll always have our, our actions recorded and, and our decisions recorded. 
um, we'll always have the, the meeting, our meeting notes shared with the public, um, and our, our meetings will be open to the public, again, to, uh, broadcast to the public. That's just part of the transparency that comes with being um, in this group. And then I think there are a couple of things that I think I want to speak to that you can expect from us um, as staff. Um, you know, we're, we're planners by profession, um, and that certainly means a certain skill set, but it also comes with a set of, um, I guess, uh, its own sort of code of conduct and things that we aspire to um, as we represent you all in this process. Um, as planners and public servants, you know, we're committed to continually pursuing and faithfully serving the public interest um, throughout this process and really safeguarding public trust. Um, we are here to look out and have special concern for the long range consequences of past and present actions. Um, we pay special attention to the interrelatedness of decisions and perhaps their unintended consequences. Um, and we uphold uh, equity principles and strategies, including uh, economic, social, and racial, and racial. So those are the things that I think we commit to you all um, as staff. You know, again, I think it would be good to put forward a some some again some sort of ground rules um, that that you you will use in your in your debate with each other, um, and then. Um, your, you, and the commitment that you all have to the public. And then to talk a little bit about decision making. A couple of you brought this up in your interviews. How is this group gonna come um, to make decisions? So I think just putting that on the table, when we have something that might be difficult, are we gonna vote on it? Is it gonna be a majority vote? Is it gonna be a two-thirds majority vote? Um, what are we gonna look for when, when we're coming down to the line of voting a plan, um, you know, when we get to that very last action to put forward a recommended plan to town council, um, what does that vote look like that we need to move that forward? So we just wanted to take a few minutes in this meeting, give an opportunity to set some of these ground rules um, and have this discussion about how we're gonna vote. So we did put some examples. Um, I think our staff um, um, had a couple of examples that they dug up, at least one that they put in packets just as the starting point. Um, I have a couple of other suggestions, but again, we were just hoping to do a little brainstorm again about, about meeting, meeting fundamentals, um, hopefully something that we can all agree on as we move forward in this process. Thank, thank you for that. I, uh, cl clearly, we want everybody, uh, I'll, I'll just give you my, my thoughts, is that everybody is, as you mentioned, coming at it from different directions. I think with such a large committee, I want it to be as productive as possible, rec recognizing that this is not a, um, you know, a document that's going to be completely done and, and finished necessarily because I think it's going to require additional conversations from counselors and everyone's going to have input. I would, I'm, I'm a big fan of everybody voting and at least stating a position or an understanding of why they're voting, where they're voting, at least that way. We can understand where people are coming from. We can either agree or agree to disagree in a you know a very professional and uh, I think a manner that would be you know sort of reflective of our community and and, and how we operate. And I, I want to make sure that we maintain that decorum throughout the entire process. Um, with that being said, I think a majority approach versus a two thirds. It just seems like. You know, there are certainly going to be more contentious issues potentially that that may, um, you know, prolong a conversation. So in terms of being productive and, and moving forward and making progress, my personal opinion is to look at it as, as a majority vote. And I'll just put that out there and feel free to recognize anybody that wants to comment or add, add a different approach. I'll second that, so sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, I second that because I think this is the way to go. Majority wins. Okay. Uh, I, well, actually, Felicia, no, you had uh, the um, a question for Elizabeth. I mean, I'm fine with majority vote, but um, so the question I have is that with most of the other commissions and committees and everything else, there is a guideline that says that, for instance, and there is a conflict, like for instance, one has majority, the other has, it has to be at least four type thing. There's not, because this one isn't written yet, um, I take it that we're actually writing it, is that there's no, 
no guidelines we have to keep to on that majority. I'm I'm fine with majority. I just want to make sure there's no reason why we can't have majority. Yeah, this is a this is an advisory committee. Um, I think what you're thinking of is a number of regulatory committees yeah. in their enabling, um, in their enabling statutes have specific um, have specific voting thresholds called out. But this is an advisory committee. This is the purpose of this discussion. I think is to establish consensus <coughs> on on you know, what that voting threshold will look like and, and how we're gonna handle debate and disagreement. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. I just wanted to make sure there's no reason why we couldn't. Yep, certainly, yep. Felicia, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to clarify, I, I agree with the majority. I, I think that's close enough for saying consensus. You know, it equals the same thing. I think we should just state that it's the majority of those present mm -hmm. so that we're not talking about, you know, if there's 14 members and there's a snowstorm, we still happen to meet. Um, and there's no hybrid component, you know, let's just clarify. So whoever's counting the votes understands what a majority is that night. Yep. Okay. I agree if that makes yep. sense of those um, present because, you know, so it doesn't have to be of the whole. I'm fine with that. Yes. Do we, do we, have, to, do we have to establish a quorum or is that automatic? So quorum for the committee is nine. So I guess with that said, majority of a quorum which, assuming nine are present, that will be the quorum, and then the majority of a quorum? No. Is that? You wouldn't be taking, you wouldn't probably take any votes if you didn't have a quorum anyway, so I, I don't think you need to establish Say that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I agree with that. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Sorry? Snowstorm. <laughs> You're right, it counts for a snowstorm. <laughs> All right, so with that in mind, we are going to operate on a majority vote basis. Uh, moving forward on that component of it. Um, and I, I don't know that we necessarily need to talk about, you know, conduct as far as we as individuals. So I'm just going um, to. Well, not necessarily conduct, but I think it is important that we somehow make sure that everybody has a voice and, and um, is able to kind of give their input and feel comfortable doing so. so. Um, I don't know how we necessarily go about doing that, but um, you know, I, the code of conduct policy it all sounds good. It's just be a respectful human being, but um, just making sure that you know the meetings aren't dominated by one person or the other, or a few, or something like that. I agree. So to my point earlier, in terms of when we do have a vote that comes up, I'm not asking for anything out of the ordinary. Just simply state an opinion or a reason for your decision and just that way we can understand it whether we agree or not we, we understand where you're coming from yes please. i would just like to see people <coughs> wait to speak until they've been recognized by the chair yes i agree <coughs> okay thank you for that yes felicia i got one question on this code of conduct i actually read it and um number d it's on i don't know what page there's no page number here I'm sorry, but I think it's the last page. Um, it says refrain from conduct in relation to town staff. I mean, I think this is more like a, a permanent committee, you know, doing. It says that refrain from giving instructions or requesting assistance from town staff, channel all activities through town manager. And, and that's kind of, I find that hard to believe that if, if we, you, anybody on this committee said, hey, would it be possible at the next meeting that staff bring us X, Y, Z, or we'd like to hear from blah, 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 that we actually have to go to, through the town manager to make that request. So can I have a clarification on that, or would you like a clarification, or maybe you know the answer to that? Thank you. Thank you for the question. I, I don't know the answer to that. I think this is, this is probably a, a very large, encompassing document, document. And I think it's likely that may not apply specifically to us here, but I will ask that question for Elizabeth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're, you're absolutely correct um, that this is a reference document that we put out for discussion purposes to help with brainstorming. Um, again, I, d I defer to the chair, but I think we're, we're always happy to help <laughs> and you guys are, can always be free to contact us. I, I do think maybe the one thing I would add to that point um, is that if you do have requests of our consultant um, that you run those through us um, you know, we, we manage her time, so if there are questions that you have um, for Judy, feel free to, or her staff, feel free to ask those, but if you could run those um, through us, that's, that's helpful. Mr. Yep. Chair, th that may just be a reference to hierarchy, 
uh, that there may not be one here, that we're all working on a level field here and we're working with staff versus them working for us. Yep, thank you, Mark. Yes, Megan. Are the documents that we have in front of us generally public? Like, what about sharing? I understand we're gonna be sharing a lot with the public and everything is, you know, on the air. But, like, if somebody were to share something on social media, is that, like, two thumbs up? Are there gonna be specific Things. Yep. So all of the documents that we share with this committee are shared with the public um, through our site. And you'll be able to find the minutes there, but we can also attach the minutes as, as you just to circle back around to your last comment uh, directly when we send out agendas. But all of those things will be there. Social media is a little bit different. Honestly, I wouldn't, I know we have policies for how we catalog social media. I'd have to talk to our communications director um, exactly on that. But I think one of the things that we strive to is to bring as much of the public input back to this group as possible. Um, you know, we know that, that, that social media is an important communications tool and it sometimes elicits a lot of comments. Um, we'll try to bring as accurate a reflection of everything that involves this committee's work back to you as possible. Thank you. I, I would just say in, in follow up, Felicia, to your point, I, I think it would probably be helpful for us to understand, is there a specific point person that we should direct maybe questions outside of our active live meetings to your office too? Is there a staff member you'd like us to use as a point person? Um, He's not here, so I will say Jim Kupfer, our senior planner. <laughs> he is the one who has been handling communications with the committee. You know, he's the person behind the Barstool LCP emails that you guys are getting. Um, so he's really been the one who's been running point on facilitating those communications. And I would say, um, if you need something, me, Kate, Jim, Ryan, we're, you know, we're all here for you. Um, but it, he's been the one who, in the office running point on, on okay. communications. Thank you. Any, any further discussion on the conduct or decision making? Yes, please. Um, just have, having read this, um, the sections A and B are um, really, really specific and they cover a lot. And I think it's really important that we have that in this day and age that we establish upfront exactly what is expected of everybody. Um, and w one other question is, have we received a copy of the open meeting law and the conflict of interest? If not, we should. Um, I will make sure everybody, if you have not received it, um, we will recirculate it to this okay. group. It's Absolutely. in that in the folder? Is it in the folder? Uh, it I is not in the folder, oh, but okay. we can, there are <laughs> plenty of resources on, e on each of those and we'll, we'll make sure you get them. Thank you. Yep. Uh, yes, sir. Steve. Uh, through you to uh, Elizabeth, perhaps you send around the link that the legal department has to get your certificate. That makes it much easier for folks they can see the whole show. I don't think we've done that. I think that's a fantastic suggestion. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Was there another you question? Took the words right out of my mouth. Oh, okay. but, but I will. But uh, I will just add, going back to D real quick, um, and you beat me to the punch on that other one. But the. Uh, with giving instructions and requesting assistance at town staff, I really think it should be direct, my personal opinion is directed for you, so we're not all giving different instructions. But... Um, my only thing is, we're all sort of volunteers, and true. and I don't know that I would sort of like telephone, I would much rather go direct to the source. I, I think okay, I'm, I'm gonna be relaying it anyway, it. yeah. Fine. I would I would probably prefer that. I think, I think it'll make us, make it a much smoother process. As long as you're fine with that. Yep, no, no problem. Okay, great. Moving, moving on, our next item, uh, presentation and discussion on community engagement plan for public input on the town vision and growth statement, including community connections and roles and responsibilities of the committee, advisory committee, and others with respect to outreach. Excellent, well thank you Mr. Chair, and thank you all here tonight. Really appreciate spending time around volunteers, and thank you again for those of you who stepped up to your new positions tonight. We're gonna be walking you through the engagement plan for the local comprehensive plan, and sort of building it out tonight. So it's gonna be a discussion-based conversation here tonight. You can talk throughout the PowerPoint. I will be asking questions on each slide, and I hope to get your honest feedback, 
open feedback as we keep going. So hopefully our goal is to outline your responsibilities as volunteers as we engage the public. All right, so what we're looking at for engagement, if you had the opportunity to look at the engagement plan, is engaging the public through outreach from September to October. I know that's a little frightening because September's next week. I realized that this morning myself. So <laughs> it took some time. However, as we open up our conversation this evening, we're gonna look at stakeholders, special interests, engagement, your responsibility as volunteers, as consultants, what we will be providing to you throughout this process, and then the different types of engagement that you can take part in. So when we look at stakeholders, all residents are stakeholders, but it's much more than residents too. We're looking at the institutions, the organizations in your town that may employ folks from out of town, from across the Cape, and especially those who come into the Cape for the summertime, seasonal, vacationers, all of the above. So my first question to you tonight is who are the stakeholders? Who are the advocates? Who are the organizations and decision makers that you wanna highlight in this process when you think that's who we need to engage to get the people going, to get folks out on their feet and ready into some of our larger engagement opportunities. So Mr. Chair, if you'd like to recognize people or if you would like this to be an open discussion. Yeah, I, I'm fine with, let's, let's keep it open and flowing. So feel free to, to jump in and, and throw out ideas if you have people in mind, certainly. Go ahead, Megan. Um, I'd like to recognize Amplify POC okay. as a very important organization to get involved. Excellent. And as of right now, we have been ongoing with our interviews with municipal staff. We've talked to a number of departments. We really took up that conference room for a whole day and uh, it was fantastic to really meet some of your public servants. I would say all the civic associations in town. Carlos, Carlos. So uh, I'd like to recognize the health ministry in Hyannis. There's another pretty big group that actually has some representation here, Love Live Local. Uh, so I think they would be good to involve. I think um, lots of small business um, advocacy organizations would be good to include. I'd like to recognize the Home Builders and Remodelers Association. Uh, PTA organizations. Could you repeat that? What was, the, what was that? Parent teacher organizations. Churches. I wanted, I, I noticed you had a list of uh, faith-based organizations in town. Yes, and, and it's not complete by any standards. Oh, okay. we're, we're attempting to I wanted to make sure you had the Hyannis Federated Church, which is right here on Main Street on there, because I didn't see it on there. I read Excellent. it three times. It still might be there. It doesn't mean anything. But. There were quite a few in town, and I was doing my very best. Quite a few. We will build it them out. It was very inclusive. <laughs> I thought it was terrific. Good for you. Thank you. Is Someone already mentioned village associations. Is that on there? Okay. Not I'd yet. like to recognize uh, Community Action Committee, Cape Ann Islands. Historical societies in the village. Fire districts. Yeah, uh, town departments were mentioned on there, but I wasn't sure if that included police in their entire umbrella, including their social work um, people on the yes. streets, et cetera, et cetera. There's fire departments in this town. I don't know if you know that. They're not Five municipal. Districts. You got it. I've got Good it. Girl. <laughs> um, other cultural institutions as well. Uh, social service agencies, uh, Bay Cove, um, NAMI, anyone providing services for the disabled or people with mental health or substance use issues. And adding on to that, the co uh, court itself, but I, I noticed that town boards, commi all committees and commissions are already on there and civic associations. Uh, I know health organizations have been mentioned as well uh, or 10 times, 10 years ago, but um, also some of the treatment centers like for, for addiction, so that would come under some with, like with mental health, NAMI was already mentioned, Bay Cove and that, but they're, they're also quite huge. Excellent. And a good way of getting information out there. Sure, I'm apologize, I have a hard time hearing you, so. 
Let me go forward a little bit more. So I, I had mentioned that the t town committees and commissions were already on, and sorry for repeating myself, uh, and you know, civic associations, and that the health had already been mentioned. I believe, Carlos, you actually mentioned that. Uh, but, and, and NAMI is great. Uh, you said Bay Hope, but there's also CORD and organizations like that. And I would also recommend some of the, the uh, other, Bay Cove deals a lot with mental health, but a lot of other mental health and addiction treatment centers that also have comorbidity with homeless and things like that, which brings in housing. It's all kind of like a spider web connected. But I'd like to add any business that operates in the waterfront district. I'd like to add any business that operates in the town. <laughs> I also think um, it would be good to make sure that we talk with the airport, our hospital, regional transit authority is based here. Um, I'm sure I'll think of like nine million more, but probably some outside developers as well, some of our larger projects that are in the pipeline. I'm thinking of landing at Hyannis and some of the housing projects. Excellent, and we have talked to the Cape Cod Commission in regards to transportation, and we have an upcoming day of meetings on the 9th where we'll be speaking to quite a few more people. I would add um, Housing Assistance Corporation and also people who are building housing within the town. I'm thinking of the new one that's down on, I can't even, off of Main Street, down that way, um, and others that are building multifamily housing. I think what you were thinking of is Twin Brooks. That's the one down by Main Street. No, another one? Ship oh, Captain's Row. Oh, okay, that Captain's one. Row. Yeah, okay. Captain's, Captain's Row. Row. Um, yeah. And, oh, went right out of my head. I'll think of it in a moment. But <laughs> there was another one I wanted to add. Also, oh, I know what it was. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, you go, you go. The, it was uh, also, we're talking about people who are building and involved in the area and that, but there's also a lot of businesses and corporations who are involved with the area who are not really based here as well, but who have an interest in promoting and, and helping the, this local uh, Barnstable community. I would also say the Young Business Professional Association. One I might add is the nonprofits. We have a jillion different nonprofits around, so how we include them and describe them. Excellent, and I will, through Elizabeth, through the LCP uh, email after this meeting, send you a form online, so when you're driving home tonight and you're thinking about all the other ones you could have listed, you're not kicking yourself, because we wouldn't want any regrets there. Um, and we'll get more specific as we go on with time, as we look at special interests, stakeholders, all these organizations, as we start to plan our actual engagement opportunities. A lot of times when I'm gonna be talking throughout this presentation, I'm gonna say we. And by we, a lot of that responsibility falls to all of you as volunteers. We will be helping you facilitate. We will be making up a lot of different materials for you to review, elevator pitches, guidance, intent and purposes for your events, um, and then help as needed, of course. At the end of our you know, October timeline, we'll have a bring it all together event with one of our other subcontractors, Dodson and Flinker, um, and that's where we will also be active in that very large engagement event. But when it comes down to your responsibilities, we're looking at event selection, building out a very specific calendar of when you can be there, when you can volunteer, when you'll be standing in front of a group of people outside a supermarket or leading you know, a SWOT analysis with a bigger group of people and really shining as a leader in this group. So any questions when it comes to your responsibilities on this committee with engagement? All right, if you have any questions after, feel free to ask. But just to run through a couple different types of engagement, really high level stuff, we're looking at three different types. Asynchronous engagement is something that can stay up in a place that gets high traffic, high foot traffic, or even social media for one, two, three weeks. So we're looking at comment walls, display boards, something that folks can write down on a piece of paper or scan a QR code and give their feedback about the plan without having to be on a certain calendar, oh, I can make it that night. Um, other options also span across social media, which can really range from you know social media camp campaigns to photo contests. I'm a very big advocate for those because in a gorgeous community like this, people have tons of photos. So it's always helpful, especially when it comes down to the end of the plan, getting those in there and people feel represented. So 
Second type is informational engagement. This is what you see you know, outside of your grocery store when people are sitting there at the table trying to get your attention, trying to get you to take their flyer. The biggest important part of this is making sure that we are setting up in a place where you would want to be engaged if you weren't on this committee. So if you didn't know about this project, if you weren't active in this process, where would you want folks to address you, right? And at the end of me explaining these three different types, we'll start really nailing down the events where you would wanna be, because when it comes to site visits and coffee hours, those can be planned in advance, but table activities are important to engage at scheduled events. So I remember you said you were part of the farmer's market in Osterville. If you can get a table there, that would be fantastic. Um, everybody loves a farmer's market, and it's tough when there's no vegetables, but they still will come to you. <laughs> so our third type is group engagement. This is where a lot of folks come in and we see a lot of co-learning. That's through open houses, a few people can walk in at any given time. It really is flexible for people's schedules. SWOT analyses are more group driven. It's really fun because you get to see some people's strengths and other people deciding that same point is a weakness or threat. Um, but altogether opportunities are really exciting to discuss in a group. So that sort of event, group visioning exercises, and then major event meetings are also a fantastic culmination to push people towards through social media and tabling events. Go ahead. Well, can you t say what SWAT stands for? Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Thank you. Thank you. That one more question mark. So <laughs> I can go back through uh, each of these. And can I just, I'm just going to pause for a minute. I notice we have a audience member recording. Do you mind identifying yourself just so we know who you are? Sure. Wandering Hippie. Wandering Hippie? Yes, sir. Okay, welcome. There's two. Did I get your name, sir? There's two. Uh, Steve Costello. There are two. There are two wandering hippies. I'm uh, none your business. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, yep, go ahead, proceed, thanks. Excellent, so we wanna outline what types of events we can really nail down tonight and see what's on our agenda. Looking forward over the next two months, you may be privy to some events and the organizations that you volunteer for. Um, just to start with asynchronous engagement, where would you like to see it in about what days of the week, what time frames, any of that information would be great as we start to nail this down. I'm not looking over your shoulder. Why don't you say it? Alicia. Well, I think the community centers in, in town, both of them, the, the adult and the youth. Um, I don't know about schools. Um, some other people might be able to comment about within the building and what's allowed, et cetera, et cetera, and who goes there, but wherever th there's parental and um, maybe counselors and interaction kind of areas, um, after school events, particularly wherever those take place. Town hall for sure. Um, Sports games? Sure. At That's school. a good idea. Um, any place where there's gonna be lots of parents or kids that wouldn't normally have the time to attend meetings like this? I think in front of post office, there's a lot of, a lot of our community centers have billboards in front of the post office to communicate messages. If we could get something in like the lobby of the schools would be great because there are people coming and going in there and if it stays there for a few weeks, quite a few people would probably would see it. Um, the libraries are a great place. And also if we can send like, I think one of our counselors had brought something like this forward before but sending flyers home or notifications with parents from school, like I don't know what we can do as far as that goes, but I think reaching a lot of parents would be a good idea. Counselors, but also the um, healthcare facilities, they always have flyers and that sort of thing. You have to get permission, but Cape Cod Healthcare alone has last count 92 satellites. So it gets to quite a few people. And there's SEIU. Yes, actually. oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. But that's part of the same thing. They're the union in Cape Cod Healthcare, yeah. but. I think the YMCA, I, I'm thinking places that, yeah. like Cape Cod Community College, the YMCA, or about the Cape Cod Mall. I mean, we're happy to put something at the JFK Hyannis Museum. So some places that are, you know, not your typical. Any village association events? I know Marston's Mills has quite a few, Osterville has a few, uh, Centerville. And are you thinking for asynchronous events or tabling engagement? Either or. Excellent, okay. I was, was wondering if I could make just 
sort of a general comment about where we're talking here. Uh, when, when I think engagement, and anybody jump in here, I usually, when I've had to do this type of thing in the past, it's usually a message that can be delivered in a minute or under that is going to follow up with an action. And I think that, you know, we need to be, I don't think we should swim against the tide. I think if, if, we're, engage, if we're identifying places, I think there's a lot of board members here that can speak up and say where they have a sphere of influence. Um, obviously, the people that have the most influence are extremely busy, and you have to deliver a message quickly. And um, so I, I think that should stay top of mind when we're doing this, that we go out with a message that we can deliver in a very short period that then w makes people want to follow up somewhere because otherwise, I think we're spinning our wheels, so. I, to that point, are we, and I'm happy to volunteer to do this because I have, are we allowed to go into like communities where there's a ton of housing and maybe talk to people in those communities because otherwise there may not be a lot of access? For sure, definitely part of this process is identifying those pockets where people might not be able to attend meetings, who may not be getting this information through their kids' backpacks or handouts, and going out and being the advocate for them so they're a part of this process and their voice is heard. I think, I, I, sorry, Carlos. Well, no, I just gotta say, uh, I'm planning to gather all the pastors, ministers uh, of the immigration community and try to get them together for us to speak to all of them. So. With them, they can take a message back to the church and speak to the whole community. So that's my plan anyway. Okay. Part of that would be also uh, through the Council of Churches because they'll have, they'll have meetings. So uh, I guess let's maybe back up for a step too. As part of the community engagement and making sure that everyone is well represented from all, from really every community and every sort of, um, uh, you know, financial aspect. So we reach down and reach up. Um, with this engagement, what what's the message that we're going to be presenting and putting out there? Because I'd like to know what we're asking of people as we're asking them to engage. They're all very different places that we've all talked about. So at, at least maybe understand kind of, you know, what the core message is. So if someone asks us, we can say very succinctly, here's what we're doing, here's why we're doing it. And it applies to you, and it applies to you, and it applies to you. So just just sort of understand that. Right. So right now we're looking at visioning of this process. It's what's going to guide our entire local comprehensive plan as you go forward beyond these next two months in engagement. So a, a good thing to ask is, where do you see Barnstable over the next 10 years? What is your vision for Barnstable for the next 10 years? And that's going to evoke a lot of different things for different folks if they have kids if they are maybe in their retirement years, it's gonna mean a lot of different things. So that's a great question and it'll definitely be part of our materials that we prepare for you and your elevator pitch going forward. So folks know when they're out there having these conversations, how to kind of navigate the questions they're going to receive and we'll have an FAQ page, we'll be able to deliver that to you. Because I'm, I'm just thinking all, all these suggestions are 100% relevant to to every member of our community. And then I'm also thinking about where we're gonna get the most foot traffic access, all the schools and the hospitals, golf courses. We have two fantastic golf courses that are overbooked or you know booked as, as complete as they can be. And there's an incredible amount of traffic that, that comes through those, those places. So that's also engaging technology, whether that be QR codes or having comment cards there for folks who may not be as digital friendly or able to navigate QR codes and Google Forms and what have you. So that'll definitely be engaging technology. Great, yeah, because I would say just refraining from, I know the way things are these days, anytime I get a random text, it's deleted instantaneously. So I, you know, certainly any, any action that requires somebody to physically agree to engage is, is much more comfortable for me, I would know, certainly. Yes, please go ahead. So these that we're talking about right here are more of a kind of passive, they do it on their own time type of thing. So maybe that's what we focus Correct. on on this slide. And um, I mean, I thought we were talking about putting walls and display boards um, inside public, but it'd be great if we could do it on main streets to out, have an outdoor sort of um, display that people can see when they're walking by too. I don't know if that's possible, but. Felicia, yeah. 
Yeah, it's, it's not this category, but if you're looking to, to get to people who are very busy and don't have time to be here for a meeting, the 610 ferry from Highline, is all the worker bees go to Nantucket, but they live here on the mainland. Uh, in town, I think, I don't, I'm not sure, maybe Yarmouth, whatever, but kind of mid-Cape, and probably the first ferry for a steamship. I'm not aware with that, but I know that that boat is, you know, sold out every morning. Uh, with the exception of weekends, because um, it's packed. Yes. I also think that, it, and I think everybody kind of is kind of touching on it, that any media that we use sh should be um, kind of agreed upon, so it's uniform, so that we're not all making up our own or anything, or sending things out, so that it's, a, you know, everybody's okay with it. And it's approved. <laughs> My expectation is that we're personally not creating anything other than if you if there's a link, let's say at an email, maybe a personal email directed to somebody with a, a an approved content. We're not creating content. That's what I'm getting at. Yes, yeah. thank you. I, I agree with that certainly. Mr. Carlos, well, I, I just have a comment uh, and commend the, all of you guys that that's the first time an immigrant, a portion of the immigrant community has been the representation of those, those conversation. This is unbelievable. That's, I'm so happy because I can go back to them and come back with some, any kind of information or any kind of a suggestion to all of you. Uh, this has never been done. I've been here for 35 years. I've been doing this for 18 years, committees and so forth. So this is the first time. And thank you very much for that. Thank you, thank you. So across the marketing materials, there will be interpretation and translation um, and steady branding. So not only will there be materials delivered to you all that you can then take and disseminate, it will all be on the same branding. So there won't be any discontinuous uh, messages, weird color schemes, none of that. So we're going to try and keep that pretty consistent. Let's see. For our next type of engagement. Inf informational engagement can be kind of tough in the sense that when people are walking in and out of grocery stores, they don't want to stop at your table. I've been ignored many times, as you can imagine. Um, so where would you like to be engaged? I have the Ketuit Market here because I've stopped there before. They have amazing coffee. But I may be striking out with this. Where would you see it in town and where would you enjoy it? JFK Museum? Museum? <laughs> I, I agree. I'll put it back on you. Uh, never having done this to this degree, where have you found effective locations to be in types of businesses? Right. So farmers markets, first Fridays, those are always fantastic because people are ready to come up to anywhere with a clipboard. They're okay to sign up with their email and keep going. They just keep walking through. And you need to be able to deliver a message, of course, and say, come to this event at this location at this time. Or visit our website, check out this comment card, scan this QR code, give us your feedback, what is your vision? So I would say those two events are very popular. Um, what are some events that you have on your schedules right now? For the I was gonna say Live Love Local. <laughs> yeah, they have the Open, open Street? Yeah, Hyannis Open Street, yeah, I, I think it. September and October. Okay. Um, and then, I mean, I was kind of thinking um, local garden centers might be, I think the local stores might, you might get a more receptive audience um, than going to like maybe the bigger box stores and sitting out in front of them. Um, so local garden centers and um, local markets like that would be good. The place, <coughs> excuse me, the, the places where local people do their shopping, not, not necessarily the big grocery stores, although those are, those are okay, but I'm thinking in Barnstable Village, there's a grocery store and there's a co couple coffee lunch places that people go to all the time and the post office. You get a lot of, a lot of traffic there. And libraries too. Libraries um, in Centerville, you know, there's two malls and people are in and out of there. Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> I would say that I, we're here often in the mornings when we come for our interviews, and I've stopped by Nirvana Coffee, and it seems like an excellent place for community gathering. If that's a good option for a coffee hour, it would depend on somebody reaching out to their owner and trying to see when that could be possible. It's an opportunity for sure, and they have excellent coffee. I haven't had bad coffee in this town yet, so. It's up to you. Unfortunately, the uh, baseball season is over. 
that would have been a perfect place. I would have volunteered, yeah. <laughs> and I'll put a plug in for the farmer's market. We go through the end of September, and that's a great place to interact with people, greet them, engage them, get them involved. We have a different group every week, hundreds and hundreds of people, and um, you know they're all supporting our local businesses and local farmers, and I think they're also very active, engaged people. So certainly that would, that would work. The coffee shops, absolutely. We have many throughout Osterville, and I think we uh, not only have uh, the post office, the library, and uh, lots of restaurants and coffee shops to engage people as well. And of course, the museum, happy to, happy to do that. So my follow-up to all of these other questions is who would be comfortable tabling? Who would be comfortable being out there having walk-up conversations to anybody that just tries to wander past your table? Excellent, I'm excellent. Portuguese, so. <laughs> so one of, yeah, one of the questions that I will be asking in the form that we send after this meeting is what dates you'll be available? What time periods are you usually available? I know that we're all very involved people and I commend you for your volunteerism. And we just wanna make sure that we can get you signed up for these events so we can make them happen. Our final category for tonight is group engagement. These are open houses, talking to special interests, um, gathering folks in larger numbers. And that can range from you know, small group discussions of 10 to 12 breaking up a group of 50 into smaller groups as well, and then having people facilitate SWOT analyses, just asking what the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats are to the town. So are there any existing events where you can see large group breakoffs occurring? I know this is a tougher question. If not, I go ahead. I suggest that, it, it, I mean, we could probably come up with a few tonight, but the, or each come up with one or something, but maybe that could be part of the homework to try to come up with certain things. I mean, I can think of a few different things, but, you know, bazaars and uh, Christmas walks and yeah. those kind of things. But I'm sure there's a lot more that if we put our heads together, you know, try to come up with a few and there'll be some overlaps in that. I'm all for homework. What's the time frame for this again? September to October. Okay. Give or take. I think the idea is that this is iterative and we evaluate how we're doing as we go along, what's working, what's <clears> not <throat> the best use of our time. So while we want to make sure we have a plan that we can all agree on going forward, um, you know, if we get to that point and we say, well, hey, we're still missing this voice or, you know, still need to do this or there's this major event that's coming up that we want to make sure we collect people, you know, I think we have that flexibility. I, I agree. I mean, I, I think the, the homework notion is good. I also think we're missing potentially a window. If we're looking at September, October, we do have a fair amount of people, I think, in flux, right, at that time of year. Mm -hmm. Maybe folks that are either summer residents that are important that may no longer be available. So, you know, if there are thoughts in terms of things on the horizon that we could throw out there, throw out there now that are valuable, we ought to think about that. Otherwise, certainly we can add to it as we go forward. Sounds good. Felicia? Yeah, the group engagement stuff is, is um, it has to be something established. I mean, that's not going to be anything that's just impromptu, I can't imagine. So it would be civic, that's where the civic associations, village associations, houses of worship, um, you know. Rotary clubs? Yeah, Rotary clubs and yeah. Kiwanis clubs and those kinds of things. And um, so that, that, that's that got to be a sta already established stuff and you're on the agenda or the program where you are the program. Um, um, even voluntary drop-in SWOT analysis for here. I mean, you could have the same setup and just cycle the people through or something like that on, in the Selectman's conference room or whatever. But, um, you know, that that's just less, it's more planned, I guess I would say, more structured. So once you get a lot of feedback from some of these other things that we've been throwing out, I think maybe this would be the kind of the cleanup stuff that you would have more established. I don't know. So, you've done this before. You know what you're doing. Sue, Sue Rohrbeck might have more information on this, but I think November 3rd, the Housing Assistance Corp 
just sent out a notice that there's a housing summit on that day, save the date, Cape Codder, and there's home builders in the chamber and others that are <clears throat> participating in that. So maybe it's not too late to see if we could get a breakout session at their event on the, th is I it can, the third? Yeah, I, I can't remember the date, but yeah, I, I can certainly help save the date with that. That out. would be amazing. Oh. All right. For I'll, th I'll throw out just one other thought well, before I lose it. Um, there is an Osterville Library charity golf tournament in September. I'm just thinking in terms of they always have, you know, things when people check in and register, maybe to hand out a QR code card that engages right there and hopefully captures some folks that have an interest. Hi. To Steve's point, and I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Oh, it's Mark Hansen. Hi, Mark. Um, Mark's point, it's, it seems like it would be amazing if we were able to have something generated very quickly that could go up on bulletin boards across town that would reach out to people that are here now that is, are really like, you know, LCPC, come find out what we're doing. Just almost as simple as that with an action plan behind it. That if we could do that in the next two weeks or even less, that, that would be a great startup and a, attract um, summer people as well, or hopefully pique the interest of summer people. Do you, excuse me, do you see this, um, these engagements as more information gathering or information like passing on information? So it's both. Okay. It's both. It's telling them about the process, about your role as volunteers, uh, about you know the timeline, and then listening, doing a lot of listening, and that's going to be part of the engagement materials of how to do this and really opening up your ears and your heart to these folks that maybe your neighbors that you've never spoken to before. So to just finish that thought too, which is a great point. Last time we did an exercise kind of identifying, really we put our tabs on the, on the map and the board and the color coding, so maybe it, at least a framework of something where we can help, help them, at least guide them to kind of, these are issues that we've identified. What do you think of these? Is there something we missed or? You know, where do you rank these things? But I'm sorry, you were. Yeah, you were no, that's fine. Um, Avery, right? Yes. Avery brought up a, a thing about. Oh, sorry, absolutely. Thank you for the reminder. Avery brought up a point about uh, maybe over the next two weeks. Um, don't shoot the messenger, but do we want to meet more often, or even is is that possible in order to get the ball rolling? Or um, it may not even be possible. Everybody has busy schedules, but I thought I'd throw it out there. Can I just offer another idea? Well, before I go down the rabbit hole of finding a date, um, because I think that's, that's segueing into like the next part of the process. The town of Barnstable goes through a registration process, I know, for short-term rentals. So a lot of people that own short-term rentals, perhaps while they're going on to make their annual renewal, there could be like, a, a side link to that. And then there, maybe there's other registration processes that we could just say, hey, we're going through this planning process. We'd like your feedback. Yeah, when, when the town is sending out tax bills or the um, fire districts and the water districts are sending out bills to include something in that would be great. To Oops. the... Oh, Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, to the event meetings, can we ask political committees, like the Republican Democratic Town Committees to participate in this? Yeah, you can ask them for participation, to boost the message, to send it along in their newsletters. It's all about tapping into the spheres that you're already in and getting them to tell more people about it. All right. So do we, do, do we want to meet more often, or is that possible, or is there, I know we, we then went on to... To try to, to try to discuss some of the things that you're doing and that and whatever. I mean, what, what's about this fun as well? I was just thinking we might get more done if we met more often. Right. So that's a question for Mr. Chairman and Elizabeth for meeting more often. I know tonight you're also going to be speaking about your next date for when you're meeting. So that can fall in there, especially. Oh, okay, that's a good point. Well, maybe one of the questions that answers that, Carly, is is sort of now that we've we've collected this information, how do you see the next steps and the signups and things like that working right. for this group. Right. So I'm a big fan of doodle polls because it helps people put up dates and times where they can be there. 
Um, there's also Sign Up Genius, a ton of other user-friendly platforms to get through this. Um, part of the form will also be when can you volunteer, what times are you usually available, and aligning those. If two of you are available at 11 o'clock on a Saturday morning, then maybe that's a coffee hour that you can do once or twice in the month of September and then another one in October, right? So we're trying to align some of those opportunities for you before we sit here for who knows how long and discuss two weeks from now and try and iron out everybody's dates. So... Just real quick, is there some sort of a metric that we're looking at for you know, how many people we're trying to engage in that period of time? So we haven't identified a threshold okay. of people. However, this is all about what you think is um, representative of Barnstable. So not only are we looking at who we're reaching, in larger events we do poll people of where they're coming. We have up a map and they can dot where they are living or where they're visiting if they're seasonal. And then we get a good look of who's coming to these meetings. Is it just folks from Osterville? Is it just po people from Marston's Mills or so on? So that's part of this process of geographically looking, but we don't have a numerical threshold at the moment. Okay. So, you, so you don't, oh, it's okay. So you don't require a certain amount of information to make an assumption about what, what we're receiving. Question comes up all the time. Uh, it's just a curiosity, just so we it's know what the end goal question. is. That's yeah. all. Yeah, you know, I've never seen a number answer the question as well as you're a real mixed committee. And I think when you start seeing the input that comes in, you're going to know. Are we hearing from everybody? I think you're going to know. And so you're going to want to constantly be looking at this input and thinking, oh, yeah, I'm, I, I know there are people out there who think X, and where are they? And and you kind of build the engagement accordingly. One thing we often do in bigger event type meetings is we'll have some boards up where we just ask people, what age group are you in? And they could just put a colored dot up, you know. I love it because I can always put it up. I'm 65 and up now. But, um, you know, and, uh, you know, maybe do they live and work in the town? So gathering that information actually helps us to just take a look back at the census data and say, so how closely are the people coming to these events or participating in whatever venues for the process, how, close, how closely do they align with the demographics of the town? That's another way to maybe get a little picture too. But I, I can't, I would never try to come up with like, you need a thousand people because you make it a thousand people and they're super motivated from a particular point of view and then you really still don't have a representative plan. I guess I'll, let me just follow up. I, I don't feel the need to, to meet again necessarily. I think we at least have the framework here, and I, I think it's, it's with everyone's schedules, it's hard enough as it is. I'd be more inclined to just understand the mission, what the deliverable is, and I'm totally comfortable talking to anybody, dropping it on anybody, having the conversation, as long as, as, long as I at least have some sort of, you know, like a bowling alley, you know, bumpers on each side, I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> Will there be a, a set social media page for us to share things quickly? Because, again, there's a lot of people in a lot of groups, and I feel like that's a very kind of quick way of sharing information or dates or events or any of that. So is there going to be a dedicated like social media presence for this committee? A page, like a page. So we have a website. So right. you mean like a... Like a like Facebook profile. page or a Twitter. She means or aside something. from the town of Barnesville, it would be like the town of Barnesville LCPC committee. I'm sorry, I'm really bad at social no. media. Um, <laughs> if that's something that you guys think would be effective, we could absolutely. I think we could absolutely work with communications yes. team to make that happen. Yeah, is that seem reasonable? Yes, it does all seem right. reasonable. Facebook, reasonable. Instagram, Twitter, all of the above are really great opportunities to get this information out because especially with something like a photo contest, you're having people compete on your Instagram page. You're having people vote through likes, and that's really exciting to get the message out about, oh, there's also this event hidden in the caption that, of course, they have to look at to vote, right? So the biggest challenge here is in the next two weeks, what do you want to do? And this is ultimately your decision and just to channel, channel your excitement. So if we're looking two weeks ahead, if we want to do that right now, who would want to volunteer to be a part of some event? It also depends I, on the day. Right, sure. of course, of course. Yeah. 
but to have that excitement to get going. I hope in the form that you put dates two weeks ahead, three weeks ahead, four weeks ahead, throughout giving yourself some extra time on the end past October so we know when you're available. Where do you want us to send those? I will be, well, through the LCPC email after this meeting, I'll give you a Google form that you'll just sign on to, enter e your email, and then you'll answer a bunch of questions as follow-ups to today, especially ideas that may come to you on your ride home. Okay. Can, I, can I suggest, you know, a lot of this information we're collecting now orally and writing down on a, a board, um, I think it would, from my perspective, and it would be very helpful as we go through this, as you collect data and expand your lists, as you did with the religious organizations, for instance, identifying not religious organization, but specific religious organizations and specific museums and things like this, to send that out to us periodically. I'm not yes. saying every day, but you know, periodically. You know, because we're sitting here trying to think off the top of our head of organizations that Elizabeth has a list of already in her desk. Right. You know, and it will take us much less time to look at a list of 100 organizations and tell you who's missing than to create a list of 100 organizations. Right. So I think it would be helpful to periodically send those things to us. We can look at what we think is missing. We can make notes of it. We can collect it somewhere that the chairman thinks is an appropriate way to communicate it to you <clears throat> and to each other so we're not all inventing the same wheel at the same time. Right, of course, and I appreciate that. We will send out the engagement plan as it stands as a draft with the form, so you have those lists. Um, and then once we get more information from you all, we'll send out the new regenerated list. And then we'll keep building because, as Elizabeth said, it's an iterative process. And we'll keep expanding and rolling out more events, and we'll keep including more community partners because people are making new businesses every day, you know, new ventures every single day, and we want to make sure that they're represented too. Um, as I think about what I might be able to do in the immediate future, I could see on Saturday of Labor Day uh, weekend standing with Gordon and volunteering him over there <laughs> <laughs> in front of the post office or somewhere else in Barnesville Village um, and just talking to people with the simple question, what's your vision for Barnesville over the next 10 years? It would be incredibly helpful to have some sort of document that I could hand to them in that moment. And I yep. can print it, I just need it. We can get you that. And I'll sign you up for that day, September 3rd. <laughs> Whatever day that is. Yeah, yeah, well, sure thing. So and on that document, is there gonna be a, you know, sign up for updates? Is there like an email list that they're, cause I'm, I guess I'm just confused, what are we asking people to then do? There and will are be- they taking a survey, are they, you Right, know? there will be, the link for the LCPC website. If the social media pages are up, there'll be links to that as well. There'll be, you know, comment card that they can access online, um, or directions to, you know, physical comment cards as well as the boards that are already up around town at that point. Will there be um, a sheet that they could actually write their name and their email if they we want can to do get that. more yes. information? Yes, yes. Yeah. Like All of it is you possible. Capture them before they go away and forget about it. So yeah. to Avery's, sorry. I I did, just one more. It, it's kind of too bad we can't use like a story core approach because if you're standing um, near the general store on on Saturday, it's a very busy place come and go and whatever, or Nirvana or wherever you are. You know, if you say, what's your vision for Barnesville in the next 10 years? And somebody's just hit with that. And they, you know, tell me in 45 seconds or less or whatever it is and have, have them speak into the story core kind of thing that they do. Exactly. And then just forward it. I mean, how cool is that? I mean, versus everything else just seems so cumbersome. Just let them speak and say who they are, maybe their age, where they live, and who cares how long they've been here? Nobody. So, um, and just listen to what they have to say, minute or less. So, you know, I, some sounds people fantastic. Can't do that. I, I, I don't know. I think it's a great idea. And I, I'm just thinking about people, everyone's on a mission, they're going everywhere. I would love to see some kind of a QR code that directs them to a survey where they can they can respond immediately and we we can get actual feedback because the, I think that it's going to be a great kind of add-on, but it may turn to be anecdotal, right? You get 10 people passing you versus, hey, take a minute, look at this, you know, this is what we're doing. 
boom, boom, hand, hand them out, and then you know, start to really gather some critical kind of response and data that we can use and digest. Sounds fantastic. And I think you're definitely on the right path here with brainstorming ideas, getting active. Um, and hopefully we can come up with a collaborative calendar so when you decide, hey, I'm free this Saturday, you can write down, I'm going to stand outside the post office or I'll be at Nirvana and I want to host a coffee talk and so I've contacted so-and-so, this person has volunteered with me and we're ready to go. And maybe I need this many materials. So that's when you would reach out to Elizabeth and her group and make sure that you have everything you need for that event. When do you expect the materials to be available? Next week. Okay. So next week, we also plan to hold office hours over Zoom for any questions or concerns you may have going into these conversations, just what your elevator pitch will look like, how these conversations may flow, questions you may have, anything. I will be sitting there on a Zoom waiting for you to step into my virtual office. We'll also publish those times very soon. Great. Thank you. Aside, um, I don't know if anybody else had any issues downloading the documents for this meeting. Um, I discovered, I, I use a Mac, I use Firefox. It did not work. I tried a lot. Thankfully, I also have a Windows, Windows environment on my computer and using the Windows Edge browser, I was able to do so. But that's advanced computing, I think, to get to that. <laughs> yeah. I, had, I had the same problem. I couldn't download onto my Mac, the first two things. But Elizabeth and the Kate. and Kate both, both Kate responded is PDF, very quickly. Does PDF work better? I think mm -hmm. yours was the, you seem to have trouble with the Word documents. Yeah, so. and which was strange, because I usually don't. Okay. I have a Mac and I didn't have any problem, but you know, it, too. it could be the software that you have as well might not be compatible. I don't know, sometimes Macs are, quirky at times. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Since we're rolling this stuff out next week, um, I, just, I just ran upstairs. We've been working with our graphic designer on the logo. Um, if anybody has any feedback on how these should develop out, um, what should go in those little boxes, I just wanted to throw those out to the committee. Again, we want sort of a a brand, a consistent brand to cost all our materials so folks know um, so folks know that it's official, um, so people become, come to recognize um, this. Uh, we just wanted, because this will be the symbol that rep represents this um, project, um, we just put some preliminary layouts out, and if any of you guys have suggestions. You um, need seven little boxes. Yeah, yeah. Seven. I have a suggestion. <laughs> That's the arrow, so the arrows, if you count the arrows yeah. on the one and down, there's seven arrows, yeah. <laughs> I have a suggestion. Yeah. I like the one on the bottom left, because it, it's round. If we almost turned it into a life preserver, you know, the ring, because it is Cape Cod. Yeah, like official yeah. seal, that the one felt a little seal. bit more official. I don't know how people yeah. feel about that, but make it into the... I like the one with the arrows. We're not sinking. <laughs> I like the one with the arrows that were moving forward. The one with the arrows also feels more consistent with the planning and development logos that you guys use already. Yeah, and we'd probably import our, our colors, our brand colors. I'd like to see something that included roads and houses and, and people doing things, you know. So, because most people are going to look at it and go, Barnstable Local Comprehensive Plan, uh, what's that? Right. Yeah. I agree yeah. that maybe some visual representations, a lot like uh, we see some landscapers around that'll have, say, four boxes and they've got snow, they've got leaves, they've got, it, it, it visualizes what their services are and in this case it may visualize what we're trying to accomplish. So if we're going to do comprehensive, one emblem for comprehensive would be the hands all the way around. Just throwing it out I there. I could have seven fingers, but. <laughs> well. The next 10 years. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of, a lot of communities use taglines, like envision, future, when Barnstable. We've been calling this Barnstable Local Comprehensive Plan for so long, we thought we'd just stick with that. Yeah. But we're, ha we're open Doesn't to tag anything. anything. But you certainly could have something like houses, beaches, water, right. you know, things that are the, the main yeah. bullets that we're trying yeah. to hit. Yeah, right. ice cream. What about an outline of the town of Barnstable within it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you could use that circular one that you mentioned with maybe a quadrant in the circle with those items you're talking about. Yes. That would, that's very clear and simple. I like that. It also resembles the Cape Cod Salty Sport Fishing logo. 
<laughs> oh, the arrows. <laughs> no, the round one. Oh, the circle. Round. Yeah. But the salties have a strike. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the one that appeals to us. All of our town seals and our town logos yeah. are round, and it, it imports really well into Instagram. And, and so it's yeah. kind of what I like the round one, but putting those things Round in the one center. with a few icons in the yeah. middle that represent the various things we're thinking about. Yeah, okay. I like Give them a that. go with that, see if it can... All right. Maybe in the interim, send it. Once they do do it, send a couple of versions that we can weigh in on. Perfect. Great. We can do that. All right, thank you. Looks like the next item, I'm not certain, discussion of existing condition, work interviews, committee participation, et cetera. I think we've covered some of that, haven't we? Oh, no, we haven't. Okay, got it. Right. <clears throat> Hi, good evening. I'm Ryan Bennett, your housing coordinator, and just wanted to provide a brief update on the housing production plan. We kicked off that effort earlier this month. Um, if you're not familiar, a housing production plan is a community's proactive strategy for addressing their housing needs and challenges. It's a required component of a local comprehensive plan. So uh, myself, the housing committee, and ultimately the planning board and the members of the public that pull this plan together will check that box, box on your task list for developing the LCP. Um, we've just finished 10 focus group sessions, one on, or pardon me, not one on one, eight members in each session. Uh, we had over 80 participants, so that was some, a really good initial public outreach. We have a community forum coming up on September 21st at 6 p.m. at the Adult Community Center, where the consultant team will give a presentation on both what they've learned through the focus group outreach sessions to date, as well as um, provide some information about the needs assessment and where we are as a community compared to where we were five years ago when we, when we did a, a needs assessment. Um, following that September community forum, there will be another one in November, date to be determined. But um, feel free to engage in that process. Some of you may be having continuing conversations with the consultant team. If you have any questions or comments about the process or feedback, constructive or otherwise, feel free to put it to my attention. Do you know what time that is? Uh, 6 p.m. Thank you. And could you state again where it is? At the Adult Community Center. Thank you. And is it the 6th, did you say? Uh, September 21st. Oh, 21st. Yeah. And it will okay. be an in-person session, but we are making an accommodation to allow uh, public participation in a, a community poll through a virtual format. Is, is that on 28 by the middle school? Is that yes. what that building? Mm. I don't have yeah. an address. I have not been there. Right, to, to the left of it, just to the left. I'm going to add to, to, to Ryan's work, something that we at the planning board have talked about is once we understand what the target and the goal is in terms of housing production creation, uh, creating a uh, a, essentially a dashboard. So we see projects with all types of housing and we really don't know you know, where do we stand in, in relationship to what our goal is. So the expectation is, is hopefully once we understand what, what the game plan is, is that we can then start to track it. So we know we can ring a bell, we can, you know, check off a box and keep track of our progress, you know, and make sure that we're, we're reaching it and, and, and projects that come before us are suitably fitted to add to our housing production goal. So. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So that leaves us to our hardest question of the day. Oh, oh, sorry, I missed something. I'll just give an update on the um, the interviews that oh, we've conducted about two weeks ago. We met with a lot of the town personnel and departments, conducted interviews to find out the existing conditions, also to um, have them think what exists in their worlds or their fields um, that um, they might need or feel they need to be fully equipped going forward into the future. Um, we also had a chance to meet the new school superintendent um, and uh, the community center, the community center um, leader, I forget her name, Maddie. Maddie. Um, and we have a few more interviews coming up um, in a couple more weeks to round out the groups that we did not get to meet with um, at this time. We went with DPW, wastewater, um, town engineer. Um, those went really well. They were very helpful. It didn't take a very long amount of time, but we were able to gather a lot of a lot of helpful inf information to put together the existing inventory and assessment portion 
of the local comprehensive plan update. And I have to congratulate everyone. You're off to an amazing start. Everyone participated in that conversation of engagement. And I think this group is going to um, hopefully continue to go forward and gel really well. Looks like a great group to be a, for, uh, a part of. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Great. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Can I just make a, a point that I make in a human health community the other day? I've been in, for the past two months, so many meetings talking about housing. We're just talking about. I don't see any actions. We have people out there living in a car. We're not talking about affordable housing anymore. We're talking about housing. We need housing, no matter what. <laughs> you know, we need to do something about that. Talking is great, but action is should be done right away. So, just want a point of that. So, yep. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I, I had a question on the previous plan. Yes. Uh, I've been reviewing it as we were requested to do. And one thing I noticed in that, about every second page, there's a commitment to review something or study something or look at something or get results from something. Is someone counting those up, finding if they were ever done and where that information is? Is that going part of this review uh, of existing conditions? My understanding is that that is part of the process is to include where the last plan is, was, where that stands. And Elizabeth, please add to that. If you exactly. Would. We've been sort of going through because there are, are many actions. I think there are like 35 pages of actions as we've we've um, sort of organized them, you know, tried to put them in various categories and put those out to town staff to help us evaluate, you know, where you know, what, what progress were made on these, and they will be, um, that analysis will be brought forward to the committee um, as, we, as we hold the, the upcoming existing conditions meetings. One thing I, I noticed, some of those were very pertinent to moving forward, so we're gonna, if there are studies like the housing production plan that we need to then jumpstart, yeah. we're gonna need to get to that very soon. It's for our work. So just a, just a thought. Yeah, I mean, that, that was one of the reasons why, again, with housing production plan, there are very concrete dates um, that, you know, that we have to keep those, um, we have to keep those up to date based on thresholds that um, the state sets for us. So that's why we're running that process concurrent to this process and trying to integrate them as much as possible. Um, we're going to be bringing hazard mitigation um, in front of the council here um, in the next month. So as we roll these plans out or as they're developed, um, we'll make sure you guys get looped in on that as well because, I mean, those are also reflective of a lot of study and input around specific, um, just specific, more specific topics. Um, but thinking about, you know, how those almost act as, as chapters or informers to our local comprehensive plan. Thank you. I, I guess before we go on, is there anything, anything else anyone wants to add as far as the conversation for tonight? I so, think we made a lot of progress. I think I think we have too, definitely. Uh, um, so our next meeting date, I know with the back and forth last time, we sort of landed on the same Thursday date. So it's never going to be perfect, but it seems like the Thursday seems to fit availability at the very least. So with that in mind, should we start to th focus on the last Thursday of September? Is that too long, or should we try to shoot for the 22nd? I'd go for the 22nd, but that's my preference. It's simply a little bit further, closer in. Yes, yeah, so council will be on the 1st and 15th. So the days that are where there are no committee meetings <laughs> uh, appear to be the 20th, the 22nd, and the 29th. Um, the 20th being a Tuesday, 22nd, and 29th being Thursdays. Can I okay. propose the 22nd? We have one request for the I'm 22nd. available any of those days. Okay, thank you. Is there a hard 6 p.m.? Is there any possibility of 5 p.m.? No. I have a standing conflict with the fourth Thursday of every month that generally goes till about 5 p.m. So I just would ask for like enough time to get from point A to point B and hit the ladies' room. <laughs> Does cut into business hours, and I mean, I, I'm, I think six is good. I, I, I feel like we, we covered a lot of ground in an hour and a half. That's, 
I would I would hate to see it start to drag into eight eight thirty nine o'clock, and I, I don't really see a need for that. So if we can get through our agenda and our and our business in an hour to an hour and a half, that's kind of ideal. I just there might be some meetings I may not be able to attend because I'm I'm seven p to seven a going yeah. forward. I mean, it's so hard. And, and hopefully in in the future. I know we, we receive information as quick as we can. So if, if there's an agenda that somehow you feel really strongly, even though you may have a conflict, if you have to potentially do something, or if you notify us to, to provide feedback or comments prior to, we'll make sure that those are included and noted as part of the discussion just to make sure you have enough input. OK, thank you. OK. So did we okay. decide? So it sounds like the 22nd works for everybody. 6 p.m. 6 p.m. here. OK. That's right. It's, what is it? It's a CCYP back to business bash that same evening as well. So I will be able to attend the meeting. OK. Which would be a great place for a little pop up. Yeah. That's a. Uh, <laughs> uh, there you you go. could be working. Uh, so he she will be busy. Separate, but that's a, that's a significant conflict for me as well. Yeah. Sounds like her part of the of the promotion is going to be taken care of that night. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's fine. That's fine. I'm open to the 29th too, though. I know. I mean, I'm fine with the 29th. I know you said but 22nd. It's, it's also five <laughs> weeks as opposed to four. Yeah, weeks. that's. Is the 29th it's my better? My 50th class reunion. On the 29th? Yeah. Oh, we don't want to interfere with that. I think we're never going to find with 14, yeah. 15 people that it suits everybody. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll, I'll let, we'll keep it the 22nd, and then I will suggest that if we can get the agenda again and, and make sure that everybody has an opportunity to, to connect or, or, or provide comment, that would be ideal. Steve? Yes. Could we like set a bunch of dates right now? Is that I possible? like that. That's way too far over. Yeah. It's. It allows forward planning. I think that's a good yeah, idea. Yeah, um, I'm okay. I'm okay taking a stab at it, but I think it, it is hard. If we get, to, if it we just, always stay two in advance, then that would probably. I mean, help. if you, if you want to shoot for, say the twenty second, and then we'll we'll look at the calendar again for the for the month of October. I Looks think like that's reasonable. I don't want to start getting into once fall hits and holidays, and it's going to be real difficult to make sure that. Can I ask Elizabeth to please clarify the town council date, the dates, the Thursdays that are available in October, please? Town council is always first and third. So, so it's the 13th so and the 27th. 6th oh, and the 20th? Oh, the 6th and the 20th. Gotcha. I mean, I would. October 27th. Yeah. 13th I and think, 27th in October. I think we look at the 27th just yep. because we're on the. 20 seconds. So if we can. If we're able to do the two months at a time, then I can request that off. Because yeah. okay, Cape Cod Hospital does their schedules four weeks out. Perfect. That's what I was getting okay. at. People can make plans better. So as of right now, shall we say September 22nd, October 27th? Is that good? Sounds okay. good. I'm out of town the 27th, but that's okay. You can meet without me. Okay. I won't be here as well. I won't be here. Okay. One, two, three. Well, wherever you five, are. Six, seven, I eight. Hope you're we would still have a quorum. <laughs> Some more fun. Are these? Yeah. Are these meetings are recorded, correct? And are, but. Are they somewhere where we can go back and see them if we miss a meeting? They are. All of our meetings are recorded and logged um, both on the Barnstable LCP website as well as um, you have three places for this committee. Um, you have a boarding committee page and then the Channel 18 website as well. And how quickly are they up? Because I searched for last meet. The la well, yeah, last meeting. Oh, usually it's the day after. But I'll double check and make sure. This committee's a little a little different, so <laughs> but I'll make sure and you guys are getting posted. Elizabeth, can I ask for an open meeting law clarification on that? I mean, no, it's a committee, not, not a commission, but is there a requirement if you haven't made the previous one, do you have to mull it in? It's a different thing because nope. it's not an application. I assume you don't. I just wanted to make yep. sure. advisory committee, so okay, just that's right. I just wanted to make sure. Thanks. No, good check. So as of, as of now, we'll, we'll use the 22nd of September, 29th 
27th. 27th, correct, of October. Um, is, there, is there any other public comment, anyone from the public that has not had an opportunity to speak that may be present? Okay. And with that, motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion Second. to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Oh, 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 sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize. There is one member of the public. Okay. Please uh, identify yourself and speak. Mark Wharton in West Barnstable. Um, I didn't hear you mention the, the phrase Robert's Rules tonight. I assume those are going to be what you use going forward in your meetings. Um, it would be nice to have name plates in front of everybody so we could all know, know who's who. Um, Channel 18 would be the best place to get information out to the public. Lynn Poyant might want to be asked to get something on at 6, 9, noon, 3, 6, and 9. So that would be something most of the public could see. Another area um, is the town transfer station. They have a very antiquated board out in front where they tell you they're going to be closed on Thanksgiving. Um, I'd like to ask Gordon to ask the town manager something that's been lacking for decades is a new electronic board that could be run and managed by the town manager, the DPW, Lynn Poyant, that has public information up there where it should be so that the thousands of people that go there every single day could could understand what's going on around town. Good point. Thank you. Good, good suggestion. Thank you. Uh, good, good points there. And with that, um, motion to adjourn. I'll reiterate my motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Good night, everybody. <laughs>